whistleblowers make huge sacrifices when calling out wrongdoing. The Special Investigating Unit has noted the public sentiments and concerns around witness protection following the murder of Gauteng Health official Babita Diokaran. She was key in exposing alleged corruption in PPE tenders. To help me unpack the challenges, whistleblower uh, face uh, former Trillion Financial Advisory CEO Musilo Motepu joins me now via Zoom, uh, together with former NPA Asset Forfeiture Unit Head Willie Hoffmeyer. Um, let's uh, start with you, uh, Ms. Mutepu. Thank you very much to both of you for your time um, on ENCA. But let me start with you, uh, Musilo. When you heard about Babita's killing, uh, the brutality of it, how did you feel as a fellow whistleblower? Um, chills just went down my spine. It was um, people were calling me, thinking, "Wow, are you okay? How do you feel about it?" And it's um, it's just it goes to the heart of the matter that people, um, the greed and corruption is so so deep within society that um, four hundred thousand rand is enough to just take out a person's life. Um, so it's heartbreaking. Uh, reach out to her family and may her soul rest in peace. Mm. And I mean, your life also as a whistleblower, you know, a lot of people, a lot of South Africans have started to say that they're concerned about the lives of whistleblowers. Do you feel safe, um, especially after what happened? No, I've never felt safe um, from the beginning. Um, even when I decided to blow the whistle, um, I, I reconciled with death because I knew that State Capture is a government-sponsored, architect-implemented system, whether it's um, the looting or the weaponizations of, of the, the spy agency. So I, I was w essentially willing to, to risk my life for, for this country. So no, I, I've never felt safe. Um, I had to be um, in Paris for about two weeks after I implemented the former, um, I mean, implicated the former minister of DPE. Um, in the ESCOM trillion matter. Um, and that was PLUF, uh, Protection of uh, Associations uh, African Whistleblowers. It was not the government who um, had risked my safety. And also, after I, 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 went, I was a witness at the Zondi Commission on two occasions, um, I was also sent um, some, some money from an, an American donor to fly me out because they feared for my safety. So we are not supposed to wait for death threats or anything like this. We are mm. supposed to be proactive. And my support has come from an anonymous donor in America and the organization that supports me today. Mm. The, the government has, has not given me um, anything. Mm. I mean, I've spoken to the FBI. I have spoken to the NPA, the Hawks. I have been a, a witness since 2016, since mm. I went to Tuluma Donzella. And I have never, uh, ever felt safe but the government has never actually offered any protection from me, mm. for me and my fellow whistleblowers. And it's a shame that it takes somebody's death for, for us to be um, disturbed, to be alarmed, to start ha discussing it. Why? Because uh, Zondo's report is coming out. Should he uh, recommend criminal charges? You're going to need us to, to be witnesses. And if the government is not coming to the party and, and giving us real physical support and rewarding us and protecting us, how do we, how do we um, stem out corruption without the people that were there, without the people who, who, who are patriots, who said no to corruption, who are every day risk their lives because of love of country? Exactly. Uh, let me bring in uh, Willie Hoffmeyer. Mr. Hoffmeyer, you used to work for the Asset Forfeiture Unit in the National Prosecuting Authority. Um, while you were there, what was the culture in terms of protecting witnesses such as Musila Mutebu and now Babita Diokaran, who has died, she had to pay with her life. What was the culture in the NPA about uh, offering protection to these people and prosecution? Well, let me say that, you know, the NPA has had a witness protection program for many years. Okay. And it has been relatively effective, although I must confess that there were times when the people running the witness protection program were actually being investigated for corruption. Mm. So I do think that it's very important that we need to look at the 
proper mechanism now uh, that is independent and credible, um, that has the power and the resources to protect whistleblowers and to look after them. And I'm afraid law enforcement, the police, the Hawks, the NPA, I don't think have the capacity or sometimes the will to do that effectively. So my suggestion is that we should create a proper whistleblowing mechanism, mm. that we should get some of the retired constitutional court judges to head that mechanism, to establish it, because I think that's the one institution in the country that people still have faith in, and they have faith in the, the individuals uh, who sat on the constitutional court. Mm. But I do think it's really vital that we must act urgently and that we must establish a proper mechanism in which whistleblowers will have confidence to come forward and that has real powers to protect them, um, to insist that their allegations be properly investigated by law enforcement. And I think there's quite a lot of other detail but for me, that's the principle, that we must have a credible and powerful witness, uh, I mean, whistleblower protection mechanism. Mm. And Mr. Hofmey, mm. I mean, listening to um, what uh, Musila Mutepu was just saying right now, saying that her own government is not offering her any protection, she's approach them to ask them to please make her feel safe to an extent where she's being helped by another country. She's being helped by the Western world, America, um, whereas our own country, where she was trying to save the finances of the country, is not doing anything to protect her. And now someone has died. Indeed. And I do hope that we can turn this death into a game changer, that it can really shock the people who have the power to do something about protecting whistleblowers into doing something concrete and to do it urgently. But it is for me so sad that we have to get at this point before we actually get action done and implemented about proper support and protection of whistleblowers. Mm. Uh Ms. Mutepo, I want to come back to you. You know, I think I've uh, read a, a little bit in your book how, you know, as soon as you became a whistleblower, suddenly now you had to be unemployed for 24 months. You're knocking on many doors and people are asking you about your credibility when, you're, when you were actually just saying that there's something wrong between government and Trillion that has caused the president, the former president, to fire the finance minister and Tlantlaneni. Yes, uh, my journey goes back a long, long way. Yes, I mean, they call me the Nenegate whistleblower. Um, I was told that the president at the time was going to fire Jan Jan Nene, uh, and replace him with somebody more pliable to, to, um, to sign the new chair deal and the SAA um, renewal fleet. Um, you know, it's not, being a whistleblower is, is a lonely journey. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about um, the criminal protection. It's about corporate not not um, supporting us. As you said, I was uh, unemployed for 24 months, two years. I almost went bankrupt. Up until um, Sigonati Manjanja, the financial mail a deputy editor, wrote an article about me. How I took a bullet for South Africa and uh, South Africa has paid me back with unemployment and Rob Shooter, the CEO of MTN, saw that article and approached me. So I was there for, for two years. Um, I'm currently employed, uh, luckily. Um, I did take a year last last year to um, to heal and to write my book, Uncaptured. Um, another another um, aspect of whistleblowing is the, the isolation, the mental illness. You become uh, very anxious, depressed, insomnia, um, very little support in, in the way of, of society. And going back to the um, people doubting my, my integrity, um, they, I, 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 I knocked doors in government departments, SOEs, banks, and they were saying, you know, we, we are actually a little bit hesitant to hire, some, um, to hire somebody so controversial. I was deemed a political risk. 
they even went as far as saying that should should government um, hear that they've hired me as part of that team, they fear that some of the contracts will be taken away uh, because they, some of the corporates uh, relied so heavily on government contracts. So it's 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 a lonely journey. They're mm -hmm. almost soul destroying, but. Um, Along the way, I, I in my in my book, um, Uncaptured, there's a there's a uh, chapter called Angels and Demons, and I have seen um, real strangers who um, who have helped me, um, who had nothing to gain. They didn't hashtag. They they gave me a job. Um, you'll read at the end how wonderful uh, the end is. I mean, I'm debt free as I speak to you right now. Um, I've had so many people come come to to assist me, but mm. um, we we all need to come together. Mm. Um, I mean, mm. you, you it, it's called it's it's well documented that I had a, a lot of criminal and civil litigation against me, and my bill was one point three million. Mm. The public knew this, but nobody even said hashtag you know crowdfund. Again, it was plop. Who flew down from Paris? Who read an article about me in the Mail and Guardian by Jessica Behosenbrook? How to bleed a, a whistleblower dry? They negotiated with the workmen. Uh, the bill was settled at seven hundred thousand, mm. and um, they still they still support me today. It's amazing that I I also knocked on legal firms in Santon, and they refused to assist me, saying my my matter was not of national importance. Can you imagine? Mm. Only when I started getting um, more publicity. They were knocking on my door saying, can we please support you on pro bono? I mm -hmm. said, guys, no, <laughs> you were not there for me. But I passed them on to other whistleblowers um, mm -hmm. who don't have the legal support, who don't have the, the media coverage that I do, who have lost um, houses. They have taken their kids out of school. Um, it's 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 a very, it's I mean one of the recommendations I made to Zondo was to have a sort of a fund um, set aside for whistleblowers because the likes of Temba Maseko, the likes of um, Cynthia Stimpet, mm -hmm. unemployed, um, they've lost everything their their dignity, their well being, their livelihood, and uh, these were um, very experienced civil servants, treasurers mm -hmm. at SAA. And um, we, we've lost a layer of, of very ethical professionals. Mm. And they're out in the cold and corporate um, doesn't want to touch them, even today. Mm. I'm, I'm a special advisor today, to, um, I, have to, I have to say, to uh, Minister Senzo Ntunu. Mm. Um, I started in fe February. Uh, we were in the Department of Public Service and Administration, mm. now in uh, Water and Sanitation. So I, at least I'm using my capital raising skills today exactly. to, to ensure that we bring water to, to the public. Exactly. So, but let that's me, um, also, it's... Mm. I'm sorry, let me also just bring in um, Mr. Hofmeyer very quickly because we're running out of time. I mean, listening to um, what Musilo is saying about what she goes through, uh, employment-wise, finance-wise, uh, and being slandered in public, and then you listen to some officials in government who, uh, you know, uh, speak at the Zondo Commission of Inquiry, and all they say is, we made mistakes. And there are people's lives that are in danger because of those mistakes. I think that's very true, and I think that is for me why we do need urgent action to deal effectively and to assist whistleblowers effectively. Um, I think the points that uh, Asilo makes as well about support, uh, I do think that we need to engage with the business organizations. I think some of them are willing to assist in various ways. and. I think we also need to look at the money that is in the special fund that uh, asset forfeiture money goes into, where there is quite a lot of funding available. And I think that funding should be used to help set up a proper whistleblower mechanism. Mm. 
so, Mr. Hofmeier, I don't know if maybe South Africans are jumping the gun in trying to, uh, you know, put place the dots together of the events that happened this week with uh, Ms. Diok uh, Diokaran being killed um, outside her home after dropping off her child at school and what happened the week before in terms of an investigation into, into PPE corruption in the province of Gauteng that was uh, a public hearing. And then a week later, she's gunned down. Are we, are we jumping the gun by trying to connect the dots there? No, I don't think we are jumping the gun. I don't know if there are any other conclusions that one can come to than that there is a link between those events. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say it's a good thing, but, you know, I, I think what is important is to use this crisis to insist that we do get solution to whistleblower, uh, to the dangers and the support that whistleblowers need, and that we demand urgent action from government on this issue. Mm -hmm. Let me end with you, uh, Musilo, um, in terms of what's happened during the course of this week, what's happened, uh, you know, you've told us, for instance, that you get no protection. There's some whistleblowers who've lost everything, um, you know, friends, uh, homes, their cars, their livelihoods. What would you say? I mean, I'm sure there are other whistleblowers within government and the private sector who've wanted to say something, but they were scared of the very thing of losing everything and being slandered in public. So your advice very quickly as a whistleblower whistleblower to those who are still in these entities and want to expose corruption that is that we know is is definitely still there um that's a great question um and i think i said in my book uh, that every generation faces a crisis um, the last generation it was um liberation and there were a minority of people who um went to went to, into exile or there they went to prison or they, um, they were killed so that we can have a free democracy. 30 years later, there's a new crisis, and now it's a crisis of, of corruption. And it requires another minority of people to risk their lives and maybe have their lives taken. Because at the end of the day, um, you, we need to be able to, to risk it all for the love of country. Um, there were giants before us who did that, and we, 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 ha we have a thriving democracy today. So I have sacrificed for this country. It has been worth it. And I will also encourage other people, be in the minority, take the, the road less trouble. It's hard, but I think now that I've traveled this road with uh, my fellow uh, South Africans, there will be more support going forward because now we've seen how the system does not exist. I can't even say it has failed us because there, there is nothing currently that can assist us. But this generation, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a generation of um, the, you're fighting against, your, your enemy is, is, is sitting in the boardroom across from you wearing an Armani suit instead of being in the trenches in the uh, fighting uh, for, for, for the liberation of this country. But with every revolution, there's pain, um, there's sacrifice. And if nobody was willing to do that, imagine where we would be if the minority 30 years ago, 60 years ago, did not mm -hmm. put their lives at risk to, for this country. So I would say, um, please, uh, now that we have various organizations, I mean, I've had people call me and say, listen, I've got this, and I say, Plough can help. This one can help. So at least mm. I've got the resources now to, to assist others. And I think mm. we, can, we can all just work together, um, mm. civil society and every individual, to, mm. to ensure that um, government officials or private entity uh, employees who see corruption have a duty mm. to this country. To speak up. And exactly. we will gather around them and protect them so that we can have a better South Africa. Thank you very much. And on that note, let me let you go. And thank you both very much for your time. Uh, Musilo Mutepu, a whistleblower in South Africa and a former financial advisor, CEO, advisory CEO for Trillion, as well as Mr. Willie Hofmeyer, um, the f a former uh, asset forfeiture unit employee at the National Prosecuting Authority.